welcome to my sewing room. I am so excited about this show today. We have a really new technique that I think you will enjoy incorporating into your sewing. The title of the show is Photo Transfers or Picture Transfers. Now let me just share with you some beautiful garments and pillows and other things showing you what I really mean. This adorable little girl's jacket is made using almost a crazy patch technique, using antique linens. Now, if you look real closely right here, that is a photo transfer of a little girl which has been transferred to fabric and zigzagged on. Now, I'm going to turn this little jacket around because I have another just wonderful jacket. You see, you've got some crochet up here. But this is what I really want to share with you. Another photograph of a little girl which has been photographed onto, I mean transferred onto fabric, and then there's a feather stitch and metallic thread all the way around it, and that has been stitched to an old tea towel. Isn't that interesting? Here is another fascinating thing to do with photo transfer, picture transfer techniques. This is a vest, a lady's vest, and here's what I want you to look at. This is a signature. This is a signature, this is a signature and an address, another signature, and these came, those came off of old envelopes and old valentines. These are addresses, this says December 25th, 1881, and this one is a man's name, and it says 1895. I just think that is the most interesting way to use your old letters and photographs. Here is another darling way to use a transfer from an antique valentine to embellish a little satin box and then press on, on top of it, the antique valentine. I have another one of these little boxes that are so adorable, little boxes you just get at a craft store. This is to, the, to my dear love, and this one again is a valentine to someone's wife on a beautifully decorated little box. Now then, something I bet you haven't thought of at all, and I just love it. This is a traditional heirloom sewn pillow with the heart and an entredeau and, and floss run through the entredeau. Right here, a beautiful antique valentine has been transferred, and I'll show you how to do it in just a minute, transferred onto the fabric, and then there's some silk ribbon embroidery by hand up here at the top on this really, really precious little pillow. And now I'm going to share with you how to do this picture or photo transfer. You are going to have more fun making whatever you want to make using this technique. Now then, I have taken some of my antique valentines and put them on this paper, which is a special paper to transfer just with ironing. As you can see, you press them on where this one says to my valentine, but it's backwards. And of course, what you want to do is press it down. It will be correct. See how sweet this one is with the little violets? Now let me give you a couple of tips. Any of this photo transfer paper leaves a little residue out on the fabric, so I'm going to cut real closely to this little doll. Now, I don't have to cut it out just perfectly, but I'm going to go real closely because it leaves a little rubbery looking residue on the side. Now, while I'm cutting this out, I will tell you that you can take your old photographs or your old pictures, you can take them to the photo store, the photo place, any place that makes those pictures on a t-shirt, you know, that you can go out and buy and put your kids on a t-shirt, any of those places can do it. So you can take any photograph to them, they will transfer it onto the proper paper, and they will also transfer it onto your fabric if you'd like for them to, or you can purchase, such as the ones I'm holding here, you can purchase these already on a really nice paper that does not have a rubbery looking finish. So you're going to cut out all around it. You see the idea there. Alrighty. Now then let me give you some other tips that you must follow in order to have this look professional. First of all, you do not use steam. You only use a dry iron. You set your iron on a very high setting. You trim away the excess transfer paper, which is what I just showed you how to do, and then you choose your fabric. Now I'm going to show you one that I've just transferred. This antique valentine off of that paper that I have was just transferred. It's absolutely beautiful. On, I transferred it onto a Swiss Batiste. Now then, if I'm using a Swiss Batiste, and let me show you another little trick. This is a really thin fabric. So I would need to put a press cloth 
or another piece of fabric that I don't mind ruining underneath it because some of the dye might go through a very thin fabric. All right, now you can see I have a valentine here that says, my love to you, and it's backwards. Well, it won't be backwards in just a minute because I'm going to press it. Now then, I'm going to turn the image side down like this. I'm going to take my iron. And by the way, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to iron this fabric just to be sure that I don't have any wrinkles in. I should have already done that, shouldn't I? Okay, now I don't have any wrinkles there. Let me pull this one off here. I've turned the image side down, and I'm going to press between 10 and 12 seconds. So I guess I'll just have to count. One, two, three, four. I'll kind of guess on this and tell you a couple more things. I am holding a heavy pressure on this iron. And again, it's 10 to 12 to 15 seconds. And remember to put another piece of fabric underneath here if it's a very thin fabric. Do you think I've had 12 to 15 seconds? I bet I have. I'm going to lift it up and see. All right, I'm going to lift up the iron, and before it gets really cool, and I may have to burn my fingers just a little bit here, I'm going to peel the paper off because I need to do it while the paper is still warm. As a matter of fact, this paper is still hot. Now, I peel it off very gently. I don't just jerk it off because I might distort the fabric. I'm going to peel it very gently. It looks like it's just right. Uh-oh. I peeled a corner of it off. Hang on just a minute. You know what I'm going to do? I didn't get that quite hot enough, so I'm going to put it right back there on the top, and I'm going to just didn't get my iron up close enough to that, did I? And I'm going to press that one more time in order to get that piece on there, and I'm not really sure this is going to work, but since this might happen to you, I guess it was just as well that I did that. Now let's see what I've got here. Okay, now very carefully, I'm going to press it up. Okay, I did get that little corner piece on, but probably I would start again because it's a little bit lopsided. Now then, you can use a smaller piece, a smaller transfer, such as this little valentine, if you would like to. One more thing, if I were to put this valentine down and press it and forget about it or have to run answer the telephone and let it stay there until it was cool, well, when I came back, it would not peel off very well. So I would put the iron back on it one more time and heat it up again, maybe two or three seconds, until it got hot again, and then I could go ahead and pull it off. I don't think I've even had this on here 12 seconds, but I'll let you see in just a minute. Oh, about 12 seconds? Maybe so. All right, let me lift it up. This time I should have gotten the complete coverage. Remember, don't burn your fingers because it is a little bit hot. But that was enough time. You see that sweet little valentine there? That tiny little angel, little Cupid. All right, now come on over with me to the Technique boards. And I have a sweet little pinafore. You know the one we've been doing for this whole series? Well, I have a little pinafore for you that has antique valentine transfers on the skirt. The top of the pinafore is just really sweet. It has ribbons and some little shiny fabric. The little dress is pink silk dupioni. The fabric is ecru. All right, let's come down the dress, and you're going to see some beautiful valentine transfers. Come over here. This one says, to my dear love. And then over here is the little transfer that you just saw. And here is another one of my antique valentines, which I have on those papers over there. This has a little boy and a little girl riding on a bicycle built for two. Here's another valentine in the middle that says, to one I love. Actually, that little boy is giving flowers to two little girls, not one. Here is the little girl holding hearts in her skirt that I showed you a minute ago. And over here is another to my valentine. Here's another to my valentine. This time it has little lavender flowers. Here is another little girl standing in front of forget-me-nots. And here's one of those little tiny valentines. And you can see I have ribbon crossed on the skirt. Let's see how to make this little pinafore. First of all, I use my batiste, this is Swiss batiste and ecru, and trace on the lines where I'm going to stitch my ribbon. Next, I place my ribbon down and just simply straight stitch this ribbon down. As you can see, divide up the whole skirt. The next step is simply to come in here, put the valentines face down on the fabric, iron them with a dry iron and a very hot heat, about 10 to 12 seconds, lift it, and then remove the outside paper. 
And you can see we put a little antique valentine in each one of these uh, little sections. It almost makes a diamond. Now the bottom of the little dress is really pretty too. We've used ribbons. This is a very, very fancy little dress and very, very non-traditional. You see the bottom has a very interesting treatment. It has the lace attached to the fabric using lace to flat fabric and then butted together uh, beside that lace is just simply a piece of satin ribbon. Use a very small needle, maybe a 60 needle, when you zigzag ribbon together because ribbon is sort of like iron. It's kind of hard to sew through. Then here is another piece of lace which has been butted up to this side of the ribbon and simply zigzagged. Over here I have a little example of what I just did. The ribbon, the ribbon is overlapped a little bit and zigzagged together. Actually, this is not butted up. I have butted it up, but this one I have overlapped. This one overlaps a little bit in zigzags, overlaps a little bit in zigzags, but you can, let me see if I can push this close, you can just butt it up together and zigzag it also. Now that technique is really very simple. It is very easy to do. And I'll tell you, it is so much fun. And by the way, you don't have to have antique valentines. You can take old pictures from your family or pictures that aren't so old and incorporate them into a quilt, into pillows. Just have a lot of fun making memories. And next, I have a silk ribbon stitch for you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is the author of a silk ribbon book entitled Colonial Inspirations. She is also a guest designer for So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's lovely to be here. Martha, have you ever had problems with short and long stitch? I don't know about you, but it's one that used to worry me. Quite frankly, it used to fright me and I didn't like to do it for a long, long time. I would see friends doing it and it was so beautiful and so neat and so tidy. However, I have at last conquered it. All right. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> when you do it with silk ribbon, it really is very, very easy. You can see on this lovely heart that I have on top of this lid, just how very, very beautiful it is. And that one of the other things that is so very nice is that it allows you to give a lovely shaded effect to something, some, particularly when it's something solid like this. So it really is worth mastering it. And as I said before, it's just so easy. Now you will see here that I've done a couple of little sample stitches. You will see the first stitch is just a short straight stitch like that. The second stitch has come up halfway and goes above it like that. Back to this third stitch here, the same length as the first stitch and the fourth stitch, the same as the second stitch. And so we go along. For any of you who are familiar with Bargello or Florentine stitch, you will see that really it's the same thing, isn't it? You will also see here, I've started to put in the second layer and I've used a different color to make it a little easier for you to see. So you will see again, we've got this same coming up and down, up and down. Now ladies, just a little hint that I find much easier. When I come to do my second line of stitches, I do find it easier if I start at the top and go into the middle here like that. So you can see how very, very easy it is. It's just a straight stitch like that, going like that. Now you will also see in the heart here I've started it and you can see how I've fanned the stitches slightly. Now there's just one thing that you need to take care of and that is this. With the fanning you have to be just a little bit closer than you were before. So I'm going in there. Now you will see that I have deliberately left a gap here and that's not a good idea. I've done that because I just want to show you what not to do. So there we are. 
When I come to do the next stitch, you will see how it doesn't cover it just as well. So when you're fanning it in this way, you do have to remember that when it's close in here, to make it just a little tighter to allow for the fanning effect. Now isn't that effective and isn't it easy? You know, Beverly, that one really is easy, and I'm like you. I especially like using the several different shades of, of uh, silk ribbon where you can very, you know, make it look like it has several different shades in you it. You can make the most wonderful flowers simply where you've got a number of petals and just shade them out is just so, so very, very pretty. Oh, Beverly, thank you so much. And next I have a beautiful doll dress for you. I think you're going to love this little doll dress with her antique valentine peeking out of a lace oval. The little dress, well the, actually it's a little dress and a pinafore since you know we're doing a pinafore in this series. The top of the little pinafore is double needle pin tucks. Now come on down and see this darling little skirt. The lace oval with the little valentine pressed in there and over here is a little oval with uh, double needle pin tucks and the little scallop skirt around the bottom with gathered lace. Let's see exactly how that was made. Now to make the lace ovals, it's really very simple, basic lace shaping. I take the edge of the lace after drawing the design on, come over here and pin the big side of the lace, putting my needles down at an angle. Now I've already finished this one over here. As you can see, I have a little trouble with this lace. It isn't laying down very well, is it? Well, I'm going to go in the bottom of the lace and look for the thread. There's a gathering thread built into the bottom or and the top of French and English laces. Now watch what happens. When I pull this light, when I pull this thread, the lace just lays down exactly. Now let me go over here and pull the one on this side too. Aha! Do you see how pretty that lace lays down? On the bottom of this oval, I'm simply going to turn under the piece of lace and then zigzag both of them down. Now then, I have a little valentine right here that I can take. This is a little boy valentine. I've already got it ready. I can take it and turn it over and simply transfer it to the inside of that oval or I can transfer the valentine to a piece of fabric and then slip this fabric in behind the oval and stitch it in. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I have one of them transferred onto a piece of fabric. Right here it's transferred onto a piece of fabric. Now, in order to do this, I cut the center out of this oval. You see where I can actually stick my hand in the oval and make a hole. Now, the only th uh, no problem at all just using a basic zigzag. I'm going to zigzag this piece of fabric that has the little antique valentine. I'm going to zigzag it to the lace, just go around and around the circle and zigzag it in. Now you get the idea. Let me just take it out and show you all in the world I did was simply to zigzag it and I'll zigzag it all the way around. Now then, after I finish zigzagging it, I will turn my lace and my fabric behind and I will come in here and trim away this excess fabric. Let me show you how this little skirt looks after it's finished. This is such a pretty one. On these two ovals, I have put some lace. I've just simply put some little lace netting in behind there. In this oval, there's the antique valentine. I have cut away the fabric on the bottom, making a scalloped or a scalloped skirt. And then I gather the lace, butt it up to the scallops, and zigzag the gathered lace on. And that is all there is to making this beautiful doll dress. And next, I have a really neat craft for you. I have two adorable Victorian crafts for you today. The first is a little glove. You can use an antique one as I have here, but you don't have to. Filled with potpourri and embellished. Let's see how this is made. Purchase potpourri. Isn't this pretty potpourri? Pinks and yellows and, and greens and, and reds. Purchase an antique glove or even a new glove and then fill your potpourri in the glove. Now you're going to have to have something to go in there and push the potpourri down into the fingers of the glove. After you do that, then come back and embellish the outside with a ribbon and you can put one of your little dried roses on there. 
Now the other craft I have for you is really an interesting one also. At the craft store I purchased a little clock and then some of these wonderful little charms. You know these are so much fun. They have little drawers of these and you can buy things that you really like. Since I love to dance, there's a ballerina and since I love bows, there's a bow. So I glued the little charms around and I also put the letter P, that stands for pulling, on the top and then I turned the little watch over and glued a pin on it and therefore made myself a little brooch with ballerinas and little charms that say I love you and bows and a P at the top. I made myself a really nice piece of jewelry. And now I have a perfectly wonderful picture transfer home decorating pillow for you. I think you're going to love this pillow. This little pillow is a photo transfer of me, a black and white photo done at one of our So Beautiful photo shoots. You see all the little children are surrounding me and I just love this picture. It has the lace around the edge, a little embellishment here, and it's the pink uh, silk, silk dupioni on the back. And it says, uh, written on the back, Martha Campbell Pullen and grandchildren, some of my grandchildren. Here is the pillow that we use. Now this one has seen its best day, don't misunderstand me, but this was a little antique pillow that I bought that I thought was so sweet for the idea. And so some of my ideas come from little sad pillows like this that's all torn up and couldn't be used. A little earlier, do you remember I ironed on this photo transfer and made a boo-boo at the top because I didn't get my iron on it? Let me show you how to fix that if you want to use that picture anyway. Just put a little photo, just put a little embellishment on it. Now let's see how we make this picture. First of all, it starts out as a square piece of fabric. Then I have a photocopy of my picture with me and all the little babies around me. And I took it to the photocopy place and had them transfer it to a piece of beige satin. Now why didn't I have them transfer it right onto this piece of pink silk dupioni? Because this has a little nub in it and I don't think the picture would have been as clear. Then I folded it under, gathered the lace, the little ecru lace, one row around it, straight stitched the picture to the pillow, straight stitched or zigzagged the lace, and then I have a little trim that after I, after I finished the pillow top, I came in and just glued this little uh, bit of cording around the picture. And that is the easiest picture to make, and I absolutely love photo transfers. Won't you come along with me to my attic? Welcome to my attic. I have an antique for you today that really is unusual. This is an antique photo transfer pillow. Now I have no idea how they transferred this onto silk many, many years ago, but they did it, so I'm just going to share it with you. This is a silk uh, pillow. It's a relatively large pillow, and it is a very large photograph. You can see it was black and white. It looks like a family around the turn of the century. The whole family's on this photograph. And you know one of the things I love about this particular pillow, a pillow case that is, not a pillow, is that some of the members are actually smiling. And I think that's very, very unusual to see turn of the century photographs where the ladies are smiling, the, child, the child is smiling. As a matter of fact, nearly all of them, except this little boy over here, are smiling. Now how they transferred this photo, I do not know. But I was so happy when I found this at an antique textile show in Massachusetts because I think this is one of my most unusual pieces. And it's also a big pillow. Actually, it would be nice to make one of these today. You see it just has a ruffle and then there's a place for the pillow in the back. Let me hold it up here. There's a place to slip the pillow in over here in the back. And I, I just think it's fascinating to know or th to think about how on earth anyone figured out how to transfer this black and white photograph onto a silk pillow as long ago as I think this pillow was made. As a matter of fact, it's even kind of rotten, so I know this silk is, is pretty old. You know, it's, uh, it's so much fun to find these antique pieces to share with you, and I hope you enjoyed this show as much as I've enjoyed doing this show for you, and I'd like to invite you back next time.